The NHL Entry Draft is an annual off-season event where teams select the rights to eligible players. Teams scout players from around the world trying to add future pieces or immediate impacts depending on their draft position. Occasionally, there could be flops where players that were expected to be incredible don't exactly pan out. In other circumstances, the team could get really lucky drafting a gem in the late rounds. There is even the very rare case where players can be drafted more than once. What? Frederick Anderson was drafted in 2010 by the Carolina Hurricanes, but for various listed reasons such as goaltender depth in the organization, he decided not to play there. As a result, he was eligible again in 2012 where he was selected by the Ducks. We could have a very skilled team of undrafted players in this tournament, but for this idea, I specifically wanted to go with players that were drafted. Today, we are going to group these draft years into teams and have them compete to see which class is the best in hockey today according to NHL 24. For the purpose of this video, Freddie Anderson will be eligible for both teams, so the 2010 and the 2012s. The team matchups were decided at random. Let's run through the lineups quick, but I won't spend too much time on each team as, well, it would take too long. The 08, or eldest class in this tournament, have several players no longer in the NHL, but they also have Stamkos in an unbelievable decor. The second oldest team being the 2009 draft year, I feel like there's a lot of players here with high peaks and low troughs. Freddy will be the starter for the 2010 draft year, backed up by Peter Mrazek. This is one of the more solid all-around teams with goal-scoring ability, two-way guys, and even shutdown pieces. I am actively rooting against this draft class because the Capitals traded Philip Forsberg for Martin Erat and I will never forgive them. Big Nate Mac guy. They have a solid goaltender duo, defense core and depth looking pristine. Two incredible goaltenders for 2014, but Igor will get the start. Also, those first two lines are absurd. Here we go. Connor McDavid. Overall, this looks like one of the best teams yet. Matthew playing with Matthews. Another star-studded lineup here in 2016. A couple of stars with J-Rob and Jakey O, but they also have PD McCarr and other highly notable players. Captain Quinn hoping to lead the 2018 class to a deep run in this tournament. Some younger players with a combination of already established and just starting to make a name for themselves. I'm also a big Jimmy Stew guy. Again, another young team with a good chunk of players already in the NHL. The third Hughes brother in this tournament. Which one is going to make it the furthest? We're gonna find out soon. Slavkovsky is the highest drafted Slovak player in NHL history, being picked first overall. Let's see how he and these other young guns can do. Some toe drag release gonna be the main tactic for this squad. Youngest team in the tournament, looking to cause some upsets. I am going to note now that I did not touch any of the lines. I let Jabroni cook. Or in other words, I use best lines. I didn't want to have any bias towards which players should and shouldn't be in, so I allowed the game to decide itself. There were some decisions I was shocked by, such as Barzal sitting in the press box for the 2015s. You what? However, to keep it fair, this is the approach I took. Last thing before we get started, either start a comment with the year you think is going to win or keep it in your head and let me know at the end if you nailed it or not. Technically, you could cheat, but what's the fun in that? On that final note, Let's get this tournament started. The opening contest is going to be an eight year difference between the 2011 draft class and the 2019. The 2011s waste no time. Johnny Goudreau coming in along the boards, finds Mika Zibanejad in front of the net and that is going to go in a very quick strike from the 2011 draft class. Now dying seconds here, delayed penalty, a shot from the point, and it doesn't go through. But what is that dive from the goalie? It makes no sense. Second period now underway. Mika Zibanejad, the lone goal scorer so far in this contest, finds Johnny Goudreau, who found him earlier, and a completely unnecessary dive from the goalie again. Oh, and he hits the Ric Flair flop! Another chance here from the 2011s as Nikita Kucherov walks out from the corner. He puts it on net, and Spencer Knight once again flopping around on the ground. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, and he hits the flop again. 
Off the draw, Puck finds its way back to Dougie Hamilton, who's going to let a floater go, and somehow that beats Knight. That will give the 2011s the insurance marker, and they are now up by two. However, the 19s decide they want to try a point shot. A little bit of a pop fly here goes over Gibson, finds its way in the back of the net, and that lead is cut back down to one goal. What a play from Cam York. Calculated for sure. Kucherov not happy about the lead being chopped into, finds himself in, and he scores, reestablishing that lead. Third period, Nason carrying the puck in. He's going to let a low shot go. The rebound comes out, and that will seal the deal. Boone Jenner scores, and the 2011 draft class eliminates the 2019s. The second contest will be another eight-year gap with the oldest team, the 08s, taking on the 16s. There's a fairly quick strike in this game as well. Not as fast as last game, but Gus Nyquist off the draw, picks it up, goes in, and buries the first goal. The 08s take the lead. They get another chance here. Down low, and they capitalize again. Grants from an angle that looked like it was no longer possible. Moving on over to the second here. We have a slow start, but Brat finds Kairou. That will be saved by Markstrom. And the 08s have a chance back the other way. EK65 drops it off. That will find its way over to Grant, and he gets his second of the contest. They now take a 3-0 lead. It is really starting to look like this is in favor of the Elder Draft class. The 2016s do show some life here. Keller, back door to Matthew Kachuk. Captain Chucky puts it in, cuts the lead down to two. However, the 08s aren't going to let that sit. Nykvist in the corner, passes to Tyler Ennis. The lead is reestablished. Time running out here for the 2016s. Chikrin finds line A. That will be one-timed by Fox. Tipped in front by Brandon Hagel, but it could be too little too late. Some dying second chances. Colton in front to Brett. That is saved by Markstrom. They do get one final chance here. A pass in front, but EK65 says not today. And just like that, the 08s eliminate the 16s. That's got to be a major upset. This is the biggest difference so far as the 10s take on the newest draft class, the 23s. Another very quick goal here off the draw. Skinner picks it up and he gets a little give and go tap in back door. The 2010 draft class off to a hot start here and they are not done. Hayes receives it in front. He's going to find a shot low blocker, giving his team a 2-0 lead. Bedard lets one go. That will be saved by the glove. No goals from the 23s in the first period. Immediately to start the second, they do get a chance though. Bedsy over, and that will be saved by Freddie Anderson, and he plays it out. Guy's got balls of steel. Another chance, Mishkov gets by his guy. In front to Bedsy, and again, another big save by Anderson. The third period is almost all the 2010s. Falk, shot from the point, is tipped in front by Tyler Sagan, giving them a 3-0 lead, and Falk is not done there. Scramble in front of the net, a little backhandy, finds its way. And this game is all but over. We do see one goal from the 23s, though. Zach Benson finally beating Freddy. But that is the story of this game. It is a 4-1 loss, and the 2023 draft class is eliminated. We are now moving on to another large gap here. We have the 13s going up against the 22s. It would be Pulak with the first good chance of the game, but a huge glove save is made. They keep up the pressure, however. And the 10 can only do so much. Lindholm scores off of a slot shot to break the ice. And with that, we have our first lead of the game and a little point celebration as well to let them know. The 22 squad does get a chance of their own, a backhand, but no dice. They are trailing after one. Shane Wright decides he's going to take matters into his own hands. Casually waltzes into the zone, sends it over to Pavel, who buries it, and the game is now even. That would be the only goal of the second, meaning we are now headed into a tied third period. The close contest would continue as we enter the third period here. Coco keeping his team in it with a big glove save on Nate Mack. Saros won't back down, however, he's putting on a show of his own, making a few big saves here as the young guns look to get their first lead of the contest. And eventually they are able to crack the code. Joaquin sends both the puck and the game home with this late tally. His team advances. This is the smallest gap yet. We have the 15s going head to head against the 18s. The 15's looking for a fast start here. Kapazov finds Marner, who sends it back to the D-man. Schmid makes the save, however, and he almost immediately regrets it because that defender was trying to walk that puck into the net. Not sure what was going on there, but it was interesting, to say the least. The 15's would strike first. The puck hits a defender in front. Rupe hints, right place, right time. He buries it, makes no mistakes, 
And just like that, they do have a 1-0 lead. Immediately to start the second, the 18's on a power play. Kakaniemi finds Svechnikov, who also doesn't really get a shot off. I feel like he kind of just walked it in the net again. So, I don't know if they're trying to one-up each other. What's going on here? But for some reason, the 18's seem to like walking the puck in the net, whether it's their own or not. After that incredibly early goal in the second, however, it is all goalies from here on out. Aiden Hill, a massive glove save on Dobson, and he is not done there. Dying seconds of the second. 18s get one final chance here. Dursey walking in, lets a shot go. Rebound comes out, and a sprawling save. You can't make this up. The 2018 class continues to get chances here. Hayton catches three people flat-footed on the blue line, finds his man, but that will be saved again by Aiden Hill. And speaking of Aiden Aiden Hill making saves. He's at it again. We are headed to overtime for the first time in this tournament. Khrushchev is streaking in. He receives the pass. And again, Aiden Hill is up to the challenge, making a couple more saves and really being the only reason his team is still in this. And you know what? They can thank him for this win as they do eventually get it done. Mitch Marner sends the 15s on. 2017 versus 2014. Here we go. As we get started here, Pasta carrying the puck wide, sends it in front, but Jake Ottinger is all over it. The next chance belongs to the 2017's Tolvanen finds Norris, who beats the goalie, but does not beat the post. It is a scoreless first. The scorelessness doesn't last long, however. Petey sends it down low to Suzuki, who has an amazing dish off to Robertson, who finishes it and makes it one incredible play. The 17s are being relentless. He sure fires one on net. That is saved by the glove, but it does come back out. And Norris lets one go, a one-timer from Heischer, and he also bends it like Beckham around the boards. The 14s do finally show some signs of life that they aren't going to go down without a fight, but they cannot score a goal before the third period. It took them some time, but a wonderful passing play cuts the lead down to one. Reinhardt receives the pass from Montour, and he buries it. 17 seconds left, and Dreisaitl ties the game up. What a matchup we have on our hands here. We are headed to overtime for the second time. The 2017 draft class having some penalty issues, and the 2014s cannot make them pay. Jake Ottinger with a lovely stop. They were not able to capitalize on the five on three, but Reinhardt sends it to Fiala who gets a shot on net. That one won't go. Back to the point. Taves has his shot deflected and Larkin is wide open. The 2014s advance. And now we begin with the second oldest draft class in this tournament taken on the 12s. A little bit of a scare here for the 2012s as Duchesne takes a shot and Vazzy dives the wrong way but Kane can't get the shot off. A great defensive play and back the other way Leonard will have a save of his own. First period just about to expire. Shen finds Smith but Vazzy shuts the door again. A critical error here for Pelik as he originally takes the puck off of Tavares but he immediately strips it back and Kreider is on the doorstep for the rebound. It is 1-0 for the 0-9s. What a hit by Tim Winston who is going to have the bell answered by Kadri. It would be Tommy getting the better of this one. Even though they lost the fight, Kreider and Tavares going to link up once again to give themselves an insurance marker. The 2012's running out of time quick here. Lawton takes a shot that is blocked and Anderson picks up the rebound. He is able to get one past Robin Leonard. And they are not done there. Forsberg carries it in, takes a shot on net. The rebound is picked up by Hurdle. We have a tie game. And with the 09s trying to get their lead back, Vasilevsky doing everything in his power to make sure that this game stays tied at two. What an incredible series of saves. But it doesn't matter because Evander Kane walks out with three and a half minutes left, and that seals the deal. For the final matchup of round one, it is the 20s and the 21s. Jake Sanderson is able to find Lucas Raymond threading the needle between the two defenders there who gets a shot off, gets his own rebound, but Wallstedt keeps it out. He's not able to keep this one out as another pass in the middle is shot immediately by Lafreniere. Post and in, what a goal. But the first period is not done there. Matthew Nyes dishes it off to Johnston who lets a floater go. The goalie was screened, didn't see it, and it is a 1-1 game. Jesper Wallstedt gonna put on a showcase to start the second period. It makes a diving stop, which is incredible, and then also gets the right mini wheat on that one, keeping this game tied up. And Jesper would continue to impress. Perfetti gets sprung on a breakaway. It is saved. Another chance in the slot, saved again. 
It almost seems like they can't beat this guy other than the fact that they kind of already did. Now, this is an interesting one. Schneider goes to dump it in. It is caught by Genther, but he is body checked off of it. It finds its way on the stick of Byfield, and he makes no mistake on the breakaway, giving his team a 2-1 lead. And they look to add to that lead, Lafreniere over the line. Jimmy Superstar, Lucas Raymond. Amazing passing play. It is 3-1, and it is too little too late. Veneers does cut the lead to one, but it is not enough. The 20s will be moving on to round two. Aiden Hill, John Gibson, 2015s, 2011s. Let's get after it. The 11's getting going quick here as Abenijad finds Goudreau. It is saved by Aiden Hill. A bit of a pop up there, but he caught it. And off of the ensuing face off, Eichel pickpockets Brodeen to send himself on a B way, and he capitalizes. Backhand, forehand. That's a glitch goal. You can't do that. 1 0. The 15's putting on some pressure. Eichel finds Rantanen, and he goes back to Eichel. It doesn't work the first time around, but the connection was so nice, they had to do it twice. This time, Eichel finds the back of the net. And they are looking to make it 3-0. Try to put this game out of reach. Chernak in front. That will be saved by Gibson, keeping his team alive. And that energy is carried over to the third period as Gibson continues to give his team a fighting chance. Speaking of chances, we have one here for the 11s. A little give and go between Nuge and Shifley, but it is rejected. Kucherov doesn't know his own strength. Let's little TDR go here. And Kaplui, the glass blows up. And with a minute 40 remaining, the 15s look to put the 11s out of their misery, and they do just that with a point shot from Dunn beating Gibson. It is a shutout performance from Aiden Hill as his team moves on. The 08s looking for another upset as they take on the 14s. And in order for this upset to be complete, they gotta score goals which is what they do right off the bat. Cam Atkinson receives the puck finally after some lovely passing, making it one nothing. Back the other way, Nylander able to get by his guy, but the puck is deflected and enters the orbit. The 08s are moving this puck around like they've been playing together for 30 years. This is insane. It confused the goalie. He had no idea what was going on, and apparently neither does the game, because what is that? The veteran's not taking their foot off the gas pedal, which, by the way, is a veteran move. It is 3-0 after one we finally get some action from the 2014s as reinhardt sends it back door to fiala who has a wide open net he taps it in and they're mocking the other team are you serious right now this is getting heated they are gonna make a game out of this one immediately after scoring the face off ekblad larkin tuck back door to kempe insane passing of their own and the lead is down to one Montour with a chance to tie the game up, lets it sing, but a very theatric save is completed. And another save, very dramatic. This time, it is justified. That was immaculate. Time running out, past the bringing the puck up the ice, and he is met with a huge hit, sending his bucket flying. And the Oase with another upset will be moving on to the semifinals. We've got Leonard, we've got Anderson. It is the nines against the tens. A quick start for the 2010. Stone feeds Kuznetsov and his shot meets the mesh behind Leonard. That is the first lead of this game. The 09's trying to tie it up. Lee in the slot with a chance. He lets it go, but Anderson keeps his team ahead by one. Kadri with a chance of his own. Another incredible save by Freddy. The lead remains. I don't know what to tell you right now, but this guy is playing on another level. It's not a level you're thinking of. It's another one. But how about Ekholm carrying the puck down low, just tossing it in front? It is found by Riley Smith, who sneaks it in short side. He absolutely threaded the needle with this shot. And the balls on Ekholm to not even flinch as that shot was kind of coming near his head. Speaking of balls, surprise Skinzy can skate with those two watermelons down there. It takes a slap shot two inches away from the net. With the game being tied in the third period, it is anybody's. Some pressure from the 2010 draft class and the first shot is saved, but a point shot finds its way onto the stick of Brock Nelson, who tucks it in from a sharp angle right off the side of the tendy. Some final second chances from the nines but some equally great goaltending from Freddie Anderson locks the win up for his team as they advance to the semifinals.
The two youngest draft classes remaining, we've got the 20s and the 22s. Early on, Jack Quinn carries the puck down low, finds Laffy Taffy. A shot in front from Perfetti is saved, but we get to see two sports today. Jackie out here playing baseball. The 20s trying to add to their lead before the second period. The initial shot is saved, but Quinn and Perfetti link up for a second time. They get their goal. The 22s need to get something going. A fake one-timer pass in front is saved, but Miro grabs the goal on the doorstep, and the lead is cut in half. Now they have some momentum. Jimmy brings it wide, finds Pavel crashing the net, and the game is knotted at two, seemingly in the blink of an eye. The lead would be regained, however, off of this Paterka bomb. What a shot. Goaltender probably did stand a chance, but... However, Logan Cooley wasn't down. Check out these slick moves, and what a gentleman dishing it off as well. You cannot teach that. Jimmy Stu gives Raymond a shot, and he pays for it, getting blown up in the open ice. The puck beat the goalie, but it did not beat the post. Jack Quinn decides he wants to pile on to his already incredible game with another goal, making it 4-3 for the 20s. And just some bad luck here for the 22s. Paterka throws it towards the net, an own goal, and that would be the demise of the 22s. They get a couple chances here. What a save. I have no idea how that stays out. Another save. He's just lying on the ice. And they can't beat him. Seth Jarvis adds a tally with the empty netter, making this a 6-3 game. Highly offensive. It is the 20s advancing. In the first semifinal matchup, we have the 15s against the veteran 08s. Kaprizov strikes first for 2015, beating Markstrom glove side. However, the veterans do rally and respond immediately off the draw. Henrik sprung on a breakaway, and he is going to tie this one up. Now John Carlson, chance to put the vets ahead, takes a point shot, and after a mini game of Plinko, Zach puts it in. Kirill the Thrill, having an incredible game, he pots his second, and we are all square once again. It doesn't last long, though, as Steven rips one past Hill, the 08s reestablish their lead. Huge goal for Eric Chernak, a shorthanded tally beating Markstrom on the blocker side. We are back to tied. And yet again, the 08s quick to strike back. Hill completely lost on this one as Stammy scores short side. 2015 is 30 seconds away from going home, but Kyle Connor clutches up. What a game this is, and they get one final chance here to prevent overtime, but Markstrom closes the door. Zaka would get the first chance to end the game. Point shot from Anderson is loose in front. Jacob is sprawled out, and they just managed to survive. Now the Vets with a chance of their own. Stamkos is rejected from a one-knee clapper in the slot. They move the puck around. EK65 tosses it on net, and Cam Atkinson slams it home. They are on to the finals. And for our second semifinal matchup, a 10-year gap between the 10s and the 20s. Paterka going to throw this puck at the net. Initially, it's saved by Freddy, and I don't know if he thought it was under him, but he was just lying there. 2010's wanting to tie this game up quickly, and they will do just that. Jeff Skinzy. Post and in, we're back to even. Paterka in the 20s trying to get their lead back. Perfetti receives a pass from JJ, tucks it home, making it 2-1. An immediate response again, however, to Foley find Sagan, who puts the puck off of Askarov, off the defender and it squeaks its way into the back of the net. All square to start the second, but Stone looking to give his team their first lead and he does just that. And the team isn't done there. They managed to get a buzzer beater from a tipped point shot. They will have a two goal lead heading into three. Perfect start for the 20s in this period as Jamie Drysdale walks in, tucks home a backhander, then a beautiful 5-on-3 face-off setup ties the game up early on in this third. And how about this? Raymond shooting for a rebound that is scooped up by Jarvis, and all of a sudden, the 10s have their backs against the wall. How the turntables. Just for good measure, Paterka and Perfetti combine again to get the team's sixth goal in the unlikely 2020 draft class is going to be playing in the finals.
Here we go, winner take all. It is the 08s and the 20s. Stamkos has been having an incredible tournament and continues that trend with an icebreaker here. The 2020 team making some great passes as they look to get this game even, but they cannot beat Markstrom. They would, however, get one past Jacob before the end of the first. Huge one-timer from Mercer. Perfetti, who set Mercer up on that last play, will get the lone goal of the second period on a screenshot. Stamkos doing everything he can to put his team back in this one, but Askarov is up for the challenge, and who other than J.J. Paterka to give his team a two-goal lead in the third period. He was in the right place at the right time. Schneider adds an empty netter, and it is all over. The 2020 draft class are your champions. I can genuinely say that I did not see this coming. This team would not have been in my top five picks. That much I can say for sure. But you know what? They fought. They had a lot of shootout games. And ultimately, here they are on top of the draft classes. JJ earning a well-deserved MVP trophy for this tournament. He played outstanding. What a crazy finish it was. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it entertaining. Now let's return to that comment you started or those predictions and let me know, did you nail it? If the answer is yes, I feel like you're probably lying. Originally, I had my money on the 2015s, but they got put out by the vets in the semi-final. This video did take a lot of effort to put together, so if you could leave a like and subscribe, that would be awesome, greatly appreciated. But obviously, you don't have to. That's all, folks. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you soon.